This is a guide on the breach protocol and hacking within Cyberpunk 2077. Now, essentially what the breach protocol is, is like a little mini hacking game which will reward you with either your ability to take over a certain electrical component or give you access to a cache or a treasure chest. Now, the difficulty surrounding this is in is basically boils down to your um, attributes and how you allocate your attributes. So, for instance, if you have a lot of attributes in intelligence, um, you will find hacking things a lot easier. And this also applies to your perks as well. Say certain perks will give you certain extra uh, abilities, like for instance, almost in increases the breach time for breach protocol by 20%. But we'll cover the timings in a moment. So if you want to make hacking easy for yourself, don't forget more intelligence, more breach protocol points, and that is basically uh, a great way of circumventing the difficulty around this. Now what I'll do first is I'll show you a very basic hack. So um, what I'll do is I'll bring up my little hacking menu. I do believe you need the breach protocol chip, which I think should be available for almost everything. So we'll just invoke that now. Now the key thing to this is a lot is basically matching your sequence required to upload here with your buffer. Now it doesn't matter whereabouts in your buffer that sequence basically exists, it just needs to exist in that order. You'll also find you have a timer here which for instance in this case is 30 seconds which trust me is quite generous but you don't really need to factor that in. What you should be doing is being um, sort of proactive in how you actually choose your options. Now, to actually input your sequence, what you'll need to do is first select from one of these first five top row um, options. So how this works is alternate, you'll basically alternate between row and column selections. So at the moment you have a row selection, which is this row here, and then you'll have to choose a column selection. And by that I mean, say for instance, I'm after E9, so I'd first select E9, and then I would need to choose a column. Uh, me a column option. So for instance, once E9 is selected, only these four options here will be available to me. I will be able to choose anything else on the um, on the code matrix. Um, and to give you also a, an example of what I was highlighting before about the buffer, I'll try and do this in a way where I don't start with the correct solution. Let's see if there is an alternative to E9BD. Um, because the actual solution for this is select here and then select here. Um, let's see, E9, BD. If you hover over these, it highlights the ones that um, are applicable. And just from scanning that, I can't do it without doing it through the direct route. And by that I mean, for instance, if I were to select 55, then E9, I wouldn't be able to select um, BD. I'd have to either select 55, BD over here, or 1C, or BD here. In fact, would that all work? Yeah, it should work actually. So let's start the um, the timer on the basic one. So 55 has gone into the buffer, then E9, which is part of the sequence, and then finally BD. So that allowed me to actually successfully complete that, even though 55 wasn't part of the solution, but the sequence still matched anyway. Okay, so let's have a look at a little bit more complicated one at the moment. Now, not all of them are applicable, or say applicable, so are, are completable um, based on sort of the solutions that are given. Now, for this one, you kind of want to look for an overlap. And what I mean by an overlap is where each row can overlap. So I'm just doing a quick check here. Now, theoretically, I could get the top two uh, in sequence. So I could start with E9, then 55, then 55, then 55, or, I could do the bottom row and the top row, which is what I'm thinking I'm going to be able to do, and then I wouldn't be able to do this middle row here, because part of these sequences is actually allows you to um, to mix and match multiple sequences. So for instance, I could do E9, DB, E9, 55, if that's possible. So let's just have a quick look at what's possible. So E9, um, E9 to a 55, so the only way we could do that is with this E9 to that 55, but it doesn't give us a DB option which negates us being able to do it. Will I be able to do this any other way? Um, let's have a quick check again. E9 to 55, 
No, not by the looks of it. Not if I want to do. Sure. Now, obviously, the the more complicated sequences will give you a higher reward. So I'm I, I'm tempted to go with this one, just because it should give me a slightly higher yield on reward than these two. I hope. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to stick with just going for the bottom one and just sacking off these two. Now, if, for instance, obviously as you level hacking, you can ha obviously it'll grow the length of your buffer. Um, but for now, I'm kind of stuck with only a full length buffer. Now, 22.56 seconds is a very generous amount of time for this hacking um, uh, challenge because usually I have had before under 10 seconds for these. That's why you have to pre-plan your solution beforehand. So E9, DB, E9. So where we go? We've got E9, DB, E9. So we could go E9, DB, E9. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go E9, DB, E9. Oh, can I get a 55? Oh, I could get a 55. So I am actually managed to get two there. I didn't see that solution, surprisingly. But either way, that's um, the uh, breach protocol and hacking uh, sort of game within Cyberpunk 2077. If you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you hit that subscribe, it would be much appreciated and you'll be notified for any future videos I release. Either way, I shall see you around.